Let's look at a couple of example problems, specifically in the y-axis that deals with forces. So here we have a helicopter, and the helicopter is taking off, so it's going to accelerate upwards at a rate of 2.5 meters per second squared. And I need to see how much lift force the helicopter's blades provide to, to actually cause this to happen. Now, one of the most common mistakes that physics students make is they see a mass here, they see an acceleration here, they see they're solving for a force, and they just use F equals MA. But remember, F equals MA actually isn't the equations. It's net force, sum of the forces, equals MA. So unless you have, and we're going to deal with the y-axis here, so unless you, do, unless you only have one force or you have the total net force, this equation doesn't work. Always draw a free body diagram. So in this problem, I have a lift force. We'll just write the word lift maybe here. I have a lift force going up, and I have gravity going down. And I'm going to draw the lift force to be a little bit bigger than gravity. Main reason for that is the helicopter is accelerating upwards, right? So the lift force must win. So the very first thing, as always, draw a free body diagram. Use that free body diagram then to fill in the left-hand side of your equation. So I already did this whenever I was speaking previously. I went ahead and rewrote my equation, sum of the forces equals ma, and labeled that we were going to deal with the y-axis. And then I just simply look at my free body diagram. I'm going to label my positives and negative, positive up, negative down, positive right, negative to the left, although we won't be dealing with the x-axis here, so it doesn't matter. And then I just simply look at it. What forces do I have going up? I have lift, and up is positive, so I'm going to put a positive lift down. What forces do I have going down? Gravity. Gravity is negative, so I'm going to put a negative force of gravity. Now, the very next step, whenever you have this set up, you can just start solving. So I'm going to substitute in what I know. All right, so I went ahead and I substituted in everything that I know. I, I'm looking for the lift force. This is my answer, what I'm going for. How much lift force does the helicopter's blades provide? I don't know the force of gravity. You might be tempted to try to solve for it off the free body diagram, but, but I don't know it yet. On the other hand, I do know an equation for it, so I could figure it out. I do know the mass, and I do know the acceleration. Notice that this acceleration is positive, because the acceleration is going upwards, and I called up positive. Always be careful of that, because if it was accelerating downwards or lowering itself down, I would end up having to use a negative sign here. So lift minus force of gravity equals ma, and if I only knew that force of gravity, then I could solve this problem. But I do know that force of gravity, because force of gravity is the equation mg. So I'm going to go ahead right now, and I'm just going to substitute in the equation mg actually into the problem itself. So let me rephrase here. On the very, you know, I had this line right here where I'd use the free body to set it up. I put in what I knew, which was only the mass times the acceleration on the very next line. And then the next line down, I actually substituted in the equation for the force of gravity. This will be very common. Not always what happens, but very, very common for y-axis uh, force problems, F equals ma problems here, where I can substitute in mg uh, for the force of gravity. So it just replaced it because that's what the force of gravity is. Some of you might feel a little bit more comfortable not doing this line of work and instead doing maybe some side work over here or underneath your free body diagram where you do force of gravity equals m times 9.81 and then you find that and then you replace that with, uh, you replace that number uh, or fg with that number. All right, so now the problem becomes very simple. I just simply put in what my mass is for m I put in the acceleration of gravity for g, and I now know everything except what I'm looking for, the lift force. I know these, and I know this. I went ahead and multiplied the mass times the acceleration to get that number. So now it's just algebra. I'm going to multiply these two and then add it to the other side. So notice it was minus, so adding it over to the other side, I come out with a lift force of just around 52,000, uh, 51,702 with my two significant figures here, and both of those limiting two sig figs, both of them were two, this rounds to be 52,000. Notice here, it actually is way more than just mass times acceleration, way more than 4.2 times, uh, 4,200 times 2.5, uh, 2 way more, because it not only is having to provide enough force, the lift force is not only having to provide enough force uh, to actually cause the acceleration, we have to add gravity over to the other side, which makes sense. Not only does the lift force 
have to be large enough to balance out gravity. Notice that it is not just the same length as gravity, it's greater than gravity. If you will, part of this lift force is the same as the force of gravity, and then the other part is the part that causes the acceleration, adding them together. Long story short, make sure to do a free body diagram, and then use that free body diagram to substitute in to your equation. All right, let's look at a problem now where a person is accelerating downwards. We just did a helicopter accelerating up, so now, now let's accelerate downwards. I've got a lady on a uh, elevator, and it just so happens here, insert funny story, if you will, that she is standing on a bathroom scale on that uh, in that elevator, and the elevator is going to go downwards. It says in this problem that she is on the eighth story, and she's trying to go down to the bottom floor. And that part actually doesn't matter. All that matters here is that she is accelerating downwards, not just going down at a constant velocity, accelerating downwards. Um, it says that whenever it begins to accelerate, whenever she begins to accelerate downwards, her uh, the scale reads 553 newtons, or her apparent weight is 553 newtons. Now, anytime you ever have anything like this, the first step is to always do a free body diagram. Now, my free body diagram, of course, this lady is on Earth, so there's gravity going down, and there is since she's standing on a surface, normal force going up. But I'm going to draw that normal force actually a little bit less than the force of gravity. Reason for that is she is accelerating downwards. If you think about the concept of an elevator, the floor is what moves you. If you're going upwards, the floor actually begins to push up into you. Normal force grows to overcome gravity and accelerate you upwards. And if you're accelerating downwards, the floor quite literally drops out from underneath your feet. Now, now not very, not completely out from underneath your feet like a free fall ride, but it's the same idea as a free fall ride where you are allowed to accelerate downwards. The floor drops out from underneath your feet, just, just not completely, right? The force just decreases, letting gravity here win. Let's come back to this concept here for one second. I went ahead and picked my positives and negative, and I set up positive, down, negative. Um, here, normally, if the object is, is standing on a surface and not accelerating upwards or downwards, we would find normal force and gravity to be exactly the same. That's what we found whenever we were doing x-axis problems, accelerating left and right, because we weren't going up and down. But in this case, we are accelerating up and down. So, of course, normal force doesn't balance out gravity. Here, it's less because we are accelerating downwards. If, if you have to think what you can change, your force of gravity is just mass times 9.81. You, you can't change that. It's whatever it is. What can change is the normal force, how hard the surface is pushing on you. All right, so I went ahead and set up y-axis because that's where we're moving. That's what we're looking for, acceleration, uh, uh, y-axis downwards. Um, so y-axis, some of the forces equals ma. And since I know we are accelerating downwards, I'm expecting my answer for my acceleration to turn out to be negative. If in the end, whenever I get my answer, if it's not negative, then I know I've done something wrong. So let's look at our free body diagram and substitute that in for the next line, some of the forces. It looks like I'm going to have normal force positive and gravity negative. Now, normally, I would continue to work this problem, but let's go ahead. For many, of, for many of you, it makes you more comfortable to go ahead and get numbers in as soon as you can. So let's go ahead and get some numbers in. Notice that I give you the reading on the scale. A scale actually shows you how hard the surface is pushing back against you, a bathroom scale. 553 newtons is the normal force. Now, you generally think that the scale shows you your weight. It actually doesn't. It shows you the normal force. Now, under normal conditions, where you aren't accelerating upward or downwards, then of course your normal force and your weight are the same thing, so it might as well be showing you your weight. But in this case, it's not true. We are accelerating downwards, so I can't say that the normal force is showing me my weight. Now, the issue that I run into whenever I start substituting everything in is that I know the normal force, 553 newtons. I know the mass. I'm looking for the acceleration. The problem is I don't know the force of gravity. Now, you can do one of two things. You could either come down here, like in the x-axis problems, and do a little bit of side work. Force of gravity equals mass times 9.81, 65 times 9.81, and then put that number in here. Or you could go ahead and do what I'm about to do, and the habit that I'm in and that it's better to get in, to be honest, is to go ahead and substitute in mass times 9.81 in place of where the force of gravity was. Now it looks like I just have some very simple algebra.
Notice once I multiplied my mass times my gravity, it turned out to be 637.65 uh, newtons. That's the, that's the uh, person's weight. That's the lady's weight here. Notice the weight is greater than the normal force. I didn't have to manipulate that or try to make that occur. That happened naturally in the problem. All I did was follow my steps. I looked at my free body diagram. I put in, I saw a positive normal force. I put a positive normal. I saw a negative force of gravity. So I did a negative force of gravity. And then I just started working. And what's happening is exactly what I expected to happen. Gravity is bigger than normal force. And my acceleration turns out to be negative 1.3 meters per second squared. Whenever I work through my algebra, two significant figures. There are three sig figs given in this number, but only two given here in the mass that I used. So the limiting number of sig figs is two. So then I round it for such. And it turned out negative. I didn't have to put the negative sign on it. It turned out negative, which is what I was expecting, because I declared down negative, And that's the direction we are accelerating.